the regular Everly City Council meeting scheduled for 7 p.m. November 5th will all come to order. Roll call. Councilor Peterson. Here. Councilor Poivinen. Here. Councilor Lillis. Here. Mayor Vaisalovich. Here. Approval of the minutes of City Council meeting October 15th and City Council meeting workshop October 15th. Motion to approve these minutes. So moved. Motion made by Koivinen. Do I have a support? Support. Support by Lillis. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item D, approval of agenda for tonight. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? If not, I'll call for a motion that we approve tonight's agenda. So moved. Motion made by Peterson. Do I have a support? Support. Support by Koivinen. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We don't have any appointments or presentations tonight. We'll allow a few minutes. If anyone from the audience wishes to address the city council, or else I'll allow time at the end of the meeting. If not, we'll move forward with the consent agenda, which comprises approval of payroll October 1st through the 15th, approval of claims October, accept 2012 audit, approve revised workplace accident injury reduction program, Approve renewal application for optional 2 a.m. license for Eveleth Poorhouse doing business as Hoagie's Bar. We have a motion. If there's no questions, that we approve the consent agenda. So moved. We have support. Support. Motion made by Coyman and support by Lillis. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We have no public hearings, no unfinished business. We'll move on to item J, new business. Consider approving quotations for repair of Highway 53 settlement. MnDOT. I know, do we have some representatives from MnDOT here tonight? If gentlemen, could you kind of give us a, a rundown on the situation there, what, what actually is occurring there? Sure. Uh, my name is Michael Collins. Would, would you like to step up here, Mike, and we can can hear you better. My name is Michael Collenbach, uh, project manager with District 1 MnDOT in Duluth. Um, with me tonight is uh, Chris Morris. He's our soils engineer, District 1. And this spring, as you're probably all aware that earlier this spring, there was uh, a settlement had been noticed on the south phone lanes of uh, Trunk Highway 53. And our maintenance forces had noticed that there was a settlement there and there was a void under the highway. Our soils crew went out there and tried to make determination of what was going on, why that settlement was there. And at the time, identified a utility crossing at that location. And based on our soil borings that had been done, uh, defined the settlement area was a pretty defined area. Went back to uh, our permits division, determined that yes, there was a permit pulled for a utility crossing there. The permit was issued to the city of Virginia for a water main, 10 inch water main that crossed at that location. And following that, we contacted the city of Virginia and then they suggested I contact the city of Evelyn regarding that crossing and that we needed, that, that crossing needed some attention and that due to the fact there was a permit that had been pulled that the owner of that uh, utility had the responsibility to get the settlement repaired. Is that a VITA thing? Is, is that? That is a good question. I would. Yeah, I was wondering, Mitch, would you know if that? No, I don't, uh, I'm not aware of whether it was VITA. Mike, are you concurring with me? Yes. It's definitely a VITA project. Oh, sorry. I believe they used part of the funds from the federal EDA and then the city also put like $60,000 towards the interconnect. So I'm kind of following your train of thought, at least I think mm -hmm. I am. So then would VITA be uh, responsible for this cost versus ourselves? Now, of course, VITA is us and Virginia, but... I, I read extensively the uh, information you gave me on that and inspector's reports and it's confusing as heck is what went, what went on there you know, six, seven grand pumping some grout in, but I don't know if the highway's in pretty bad shape. And I would say the section would have to be replaced on that, but 
We went from six grand to 25,000, and I'm just shooting from the hip. It looks like it's going to be north of 30 to do it right. But I was reading some of the inspectors' reports, and I don't know what the heck is going on there. There are partial holes drilled, one stopped, another one started. You know, it's if we're going to do something there to do it right, that's you know our thoughts there. And on yeah, that project, is there any any test drilling done there too, or? Um, yeah. Chris, would you mind? Kind of yeah, because I'm, I'm just curious. I was reading the reports there. It's yeah, my name is Chris Morrison with MnDOT. Uh, we did cord through the pavement to identify the limits of the uh, void under it. Because prior to that, we didn't know if it was a settlement issue that's kind of continuous or if it's isolated. And we could confirm it. <coughs> Excuse me, it's isolated to that utility trench. <clears throat> Sorry. And I didn't even know it was a utility trench at the time that we drilled it, but upon drilling it, that's when we found out the records that it was a utility trench directly underneath that void. And um, to answer this, kind of, you also asked about repairing poor pavement prop. Mm -hmm. What's the right course of action? This pavement is somewhat old, you understand yeah. that. But it does have a reasonable ride, but that grouting option, which I don't know what the quoted amount was, do you own that? I think that was the six or seven thousand. Yes. Yeah, the six or seven thousand. That should, we have fully expectation that would fix it adequately. Because <coughs> it won't be as good as new, but we don't need it as good as mm -hmm. new. We just need it. Right now, there's a void under it, it's potentially unsafe. Our maintenance crews put a little bituminous in there to try to stabilize it, but um, long term, um, to make sure that section of pavement doesn't collapse, that's right. droughting underneath it, um, we feel comfortable that's acceptable fix. Because so. I know there was uh, some other concerns, uh, I think, with the utilities under there. Eric, you and I had spoken. Yeah, I, I think the, the issue was uh, based upon what uh, Director Wisco and myself could gather. There, there was, I think he said in his memo that the uh, boring contractor had lost a boring head under there. And, and uh, you know, I guess at this stage, you know, my thought would be is, you know, MnDOT's engineers have taken a look at it. And I would have a tendency, if they're saying that grouting option is, is a, an acceptable option, my, my thought would be to to follow along with that and uh, pursue that option as a, as a repair. It, it's hard to know exactly what's going on under there, but it sounds like MnDOT has, has taken some time and effort to uh, do some soil borings to to at least kind of identify the uh, limits of the void under the highway. Yeah, because my, my concern is do we do more damage with that, but you don't think that's going to damage the surface of the road pumping that grout under because it's it you know it's got a lot of patches yeah this repair is kind of similar to what when uh, we have highway bridges we have the approach panels it's the first section of pavement coming off or leading into a bridge and we get settlement with those and that's a fairly routine fix is to jack uh, concrete underneath it and this company has done work for us um before so we're we're comfortable with you I mean, it's, we're not picking the company. We're just mm -hmm. looking at the proposals presented to you. And we took a look at them. That company should be able to perform that work adequately. Because you're right, though. If, if they just go in willy-nilly to jack a bunch of grout under that, you might get a bigger bump than is there in home. But. Well, that's, that was my concern. You know, if yeah. it's going to end up something more anyway. but. No, it's uh, concrete when it does cure, it has negligible shrinkage or not. So it's like when they jack it and let it, you know, level mm -hmm. it out, they can level it out on site. You know, if they over inflate it, if you want to use that term, they can take material out and bring it back down to level. So they do have the ability to get a good finished product. So. And as far as future settlement, being that this was constructed, what was the date? Eight, ten, twelve years ago, or something like that. The utility itself. Yeah. Two thousand four or five. Okay, well, mm -hmm. we'll go eight years. Um, 
most of that sediment probably occurred within the first two or three years and just hadn't been discovered because the concrete is bridging over it. And I wouldn't anticipate much further settlement with this trench. So this should fix it until we come through um, in whatever we do to the pavement, replace the pavement for whatever, mm -hmm. 10, 20 years from now. Yeah, that was my only question. If I was reading the reports and couldn't get answers from yeah. one of the consulting engineers on there, I don't know what, kind of like a mystery novel, you know? <laughs> yeah. I was getting more confused the more I went read through it. But uh, we had two quotes, one for, you know, totally replacing the concrete, but you feel the grout part would yeah. make, it, make it safe? Yep. Yeah, as far as Mindet, whatever you want, grout or pavement replacements your choice, but obviously the grouting is much cheaper. So, And we didn't know that <clears throat> at the time. Could you speak uh, as to um, whether or not Midnight would be willing to provide some traffic control for us if we choose to go with either option? I don't. That, that question had come up, and I talked with uh, our district management staff, and at this time they, we could not commit to that, no. And so, Mike, um, if we make this motion to accept this, um, you know, about five thousand dollar bid plus the traffic control quotes, um, here, you know, it does talk about they've estimated the amount of material they feel could be used, but they may need to use more. So, how do we cap that in our motion so that? I think what you would have to do in this case, Councilor uh, Peterson, would be to accept their proposal, and again, they have a, a lump sum cost of. $4,977 for up to three yards of material, three cubic yards. Any additional cubic yardage that's needed is, will be billed at 575 per cubic yard. So I think the correct, uh, or the way to handle this would be to accept their proposal. That way you're accepting that base and any volume is unknown. So that variable rate would be there if we need four or five. Yes, please. The, the voids that we measured, mm -hmm. that's not going to be a no. Uh, I anticipate five to ten yards of concrete. Okay, that's, that was my next question. Yeah. So then it's not really a $5,000 quote. No. If, it, if we need well, ten, you know, 10 yards. If we, yeah, and they give the unit price. So yeah. Mm -hmm. so. And Morris, I, you, you estimated five to ten cubic yard? Yeah. 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 And our maintenance force has had to stabilize it with some bituminous, and I don't know how much bituminous to put in there. So it may be as well as three, but I really don't. I think five to ten. Realistic. Yeah, three three doesn't cover much. No. Doesn't much at all. So with the traffic control and everything, we're probably looking at what? Ten, twelve grand? Well, I guess we've got to do it. Now we're stuck. We have to do it. So I'll make the motion. Well, we just, let's, let me add one thing. That we uh, notify, uh, I think we got partners in this, whether they're unwilling or not. Vita should be a partner in this. I think that's a great idea. We uh, you know, split the cost. If we do it, we'll bill them for their half. Whether we collect or not is another matter, but I think you know it's a sh shared responsibility that project there. So you'd like my motion to include that? Yes. Okay. So I'll make the motion to accept this um, this proposal from uh, Terrazzo Crack you Repair. You want to cap it at a certain amount, fifteen grand or something, Beth, or what? Um, or just let it go. Well. I mean, I yeah, they're paying half anyway, so. <laughs> there it's. Yeah, the, da the danger is if you if you cap it and they get yeah, out there and right. they they mobilize to do this project and you cap it, uh, and they they're cap and then you're then you're running into all sorts of logistical problems if they can't repair it the way they should. So I think uh, Director Wisco's recommendation is correct. If you're going to do this, you should probably accept the quote as presented. Uh, and, and then also including the motion, the part about possible reimbursement from VITA or VIETA, whichever one it is. Okay, so that would be my motion, uh, including traffic control costs. One, one other item on MnDOT's mm -hmm. behalf is schedule. I mean, 
given the time of year we're at here, I think it's critical if this gets done between now and Thanksgiving time. Well, I suppose that's going to be up to the contractor. You did know. speak to him and, and told him that, you know, the council was considering it tonight. Obviously, we need to do a permit with MnDOT. Uh, Allenbach mentioned just a short form. I'll get that to MnDOT tomorrow. I'll okay. try the contractor. Uh, he was thinking, obviously, this week is probably out for him, but he could possibly start. Great. Okay. Yeah, once we do our part, uh, it'll be kind of up to them, you know, once they get put on notice. Just want to make sure that we, we know that there's a sense of urgency there, and I think the council recognizes that. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so yeah. that would be my. That's your motion. motion. Do we have support to that motion? I'll support. So made by Peterson. Support by Lillis. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, item number two, consider authorizing Stanek Consulting to proceed with design service from the Eppley City Auditorium renovation project phase two. Bruce, you want to just remind us what we talked about? <laughs> Certainly. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council members. Thank you. Um, Bruce Paulson from Stantec Consulting. Um, we were here um, last week and met with the some of the city council members, Mr. Mayor, uh, and uh, interested citizens to discuss phase two of the city hall or the city auditorium renovation project. Um, the four items that we were tasked to take a look at as part of the facility plan uh, were wall and ceiling repairs, painting, um, lighting and electrical system upgrades, construct ADA compliant men's and women's restrooms and heating system repairs and upgrades. Um, based on our presentation last week in our discussion and work session earlier, um, the number one priority is the mechanical system. We have to have that operating in order for anybody to be in the building um, doing work or occupying work, not trying to build um, The second item that's uh, the second priority would be getting the electrical system upgraded um, and getting lights that are currently no lights operating in the auditorium itself, um, other than the exit lights that are part of phase one. Um, the, the third on the list uh, as far as priorities would be getting the bathrooms um, constructed to be ADA compliant, um, and then the fourth is wall and ceiling repairs um, and painting. Um, based on the work session, um, we've been directed to proceed with items one, two and four, the wall and ceiling repairs, the painting, lighting electrical system upgrades, and the heating system repairs and upgrades. Um, with all of these systems being looked at from a master plan standpoint, so that we're setting up the system both from the mechanical and electrical side for full building refurbishment and renovation. Um, and that's what we're we'll doing. As far as the bathrooms go, uh, I understand correctly, we're just going to look at upgrade or bringing the bathrooms that are on the main floor into working order, create an accessible route to the bathroom that's in the southwest side of the building, and then the bathrooms that are on the southeast side are not ADA compliant because there are steps down to them, but we can make them usable, get the fixtures functioning so that we do have bathrooms <coughs> available and can at least get our Anybody have any questions? Uh, Bruce, recap what we talked about. If not, who would like to entertain a motion to get rolling on that? Okay. Items one, two, and four. I'll make the motion. We have support. Support. Motion made by Peterson, support by Koivinen. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Item number three. Consider approving easement for Minnesota Power to construct 115 KV power line across city property near the city garage. If 
Geez, I thought you were with MnDOT. <laughs> <laughs> thought you had those fancy maps for MnDOT there. I know. I know. <laughs> well, first, I'd like to thank the City Council for the opportunity to speak here tonight. My name is Stan McCourtney. I'm with Minnesota Power. I think as uh, most people in this room are, are fully aware, there's been a strong demand for taconite or, or iron ore in northeastern Minnesota. And as a result, should, do I need to talk into this? Yes. Can I take it with me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a result, uh, United Taconite is looking to extend their mining operations to the... Yeah. You can move it over here. Yeah. Uh, United Tech Knights looking to extend their mining operation to the south and to the west. The problem that we have is that there is a transmission line in the way. Um, I met with uh, the city council here about eight months ago and kind of introduced the project to you. Um, what Minnesota Power is proposing to do here is to uh, reroute this existing transmission line to the south along Highway 101 and to the west where it will connect into our existing uh, electrical infrastructure. Um, for a line of this voltage, it's 115 kilovolt, uh, and of this length, the permitting authority uh, lies with the state of Minnesota. We need to get a route permit in order to, uh, to build this line here. However, we also need to get uh, uh, easement for right-of-way for these projects too, and that's one of the reasons why Mike was suggesting I come here tonight is to kind of go over the project a little bit, what the city's involvement would be in this and, and, and what we would be looking for. Um, this is kind of a close-up version of, of what I just showed you here. Um, as you look at the map here, what would happen is this existing portion of the line, this portion would get wrecked out. We'd meet up with this existing portion. We'd follow the uh, eastern side of Utax Hall Road and come across <clears throat> this northern part, here's the uh, water treatment facility. Um, the line would come across this north side here and come down across the Highway 101 and extend west. Now, like I said, as you saw the map there. Now, <clears throat> the uh, right away that we would be looking to acquire would be 100 feet wide, 50 feet on each side of center line there. And, uh, Again, that's uh, why Mike has uh, requested me to, uh, to come here tonight is to discuss it further um, and answer any questions or take any comments that anyone might have. Do uh, you have anything else you'd like me to add there, Mike? I'm just, I've been working with Dan and others from Minnesota Power over the last few months. They have a desire to cross our public works garage area. And we selected a location that I think will have minimal impact on current and any future activity in that area. Certainly, uh, we didn't want to get too close to the wastewater treatment plant. I think that was one option that was looked at. As uh, from you know, going through the construction in 2004 and five, there's a lot of overhead cranes and equipment that run around that area. So we selected a location kind of on the western edge of the city garage property. And that's what's outlined in the easement request, kind of behind our winter sand pile. And I really think that'll have minimal or no effect on public works activity in the future and still satisfy their will satisfy their needs for relocating this to a copy. Anybody have any questions? Mitch, what other what other documents do we have? Yeah, there? you have a uh, easement agreement. Is this sufficient here? Uh, yeah, that is. Uh, it's uh, been reviewed by me, and I, it meets with my approval. So I think uh, it's ready to go here to approve the uh, easement agreement with Minnesota Power and authorize signatures. Okay. Anybody have any questions? We'll stand. Is that a legal term? Yeah. So I can't do it. people. Dan, when do you think the work is going to start? Um, if uh, we're successful in getting the routes permit from the state, it would begin this winter, probably January, February timeline right there. Oh, okay. First quarter of uh, 14. Anybody else have any questions of Dan? You guys had a public uh, meeting about the move of this transition line, correct? Correct. We've had, uh, we've, we've had a couple different meetings yes, in regards yeah. to this. So, and uh, the attendance was pretty well. I had to miss it that night. So. 
Excuse me? The attendance was well? I mean, there was a good um, We had a few people show up. Yeah, I mean, we had uh, two different, uh, when, the, when the state permits something like this, they, they write what's called uh, an environmental assessment. And so they had two different scoping meetings for that, and then they had a hearing on the actual uh, environmental assessment plan. Any other questions? If not, can we motion that we grant the easement to Minnesota Power? So not moved. Motion made by Coivinen. Do I have support? Support. Support by Peterson. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Item number four, consider approving invoice from Cry Steel Truck Equipment for furnishing and installing a new dump box on truck 13. And it's 18,963.11, that is the amended price for that? Right. <clears throat> we got the truck back already and stuff? Or? Yeah. Looks like a new truck. Anybody have any questions? We have a motion that we approve that invoice and pay our bill. So moved. <laughs> we have a support. Support. Motion made by Coivinen, support by Peterson. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Next item, recommendation from fire commission to hire firefighter, Jeffrey Cruz. I have a motion that we accept the recommendation from the commission. So moved. Motion made by Lillis. Do we have a support? Support. Support by Peterson. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item number six, request from police chief to sell forfeited vehicle. Holy man. <laughs> 82 Honda. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I have a motion that we have the chief dispose of this vehicle in the usual manner. There's still people out there who want them. So moved. Motion made by Lillis. Do I have a support? Support. Support by Coivinen. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Anybody else have anything in the council to report? Any activities? Uh, just that it's National Recycling Week. So just a <laughs> reminder that recycling does help with our refuse costs here in the city. Anyone else have anything? Anyone from the audience have anything? Don't all stand up at once here. <laughs> if not, meeting adjourned.